tucked away in the heart of London's Mayfair is Sketch. The brainchild of culinary fantasist and Michelin genius Pierre Gagnier. And the world's only Michelin starred restaurant to serve high tea. Over 12 million pounds were spent on lavishly refurbishing the building, which houses two restaurants, a bar, an art gallery and a patisserie cafe. Bill Clinton, Prince Andrew and Kate Moss have all eaten here. To match the A-list clientele and opulent surroundings, every dish that leaves the kitchen has to be a work of art. It is this level of excellence that the chefs will have to achieve today, cooking a Michelin-starred level high tea. Nothing less than perfection will do, because they will be cooking for three of the world's greatest pastry chefs, including master patissier and one of the godfathers of modern cuisine in Britain, Michel Roux. Overseeing them is head chef Roel Lintemans. Our standards are very high. Uh, you have to be up to our expectations. That's the basic rule for today. An apprenticeship in the pastry section is often considered to be a prerequisite to becoming a great chef. Pastry is an exact science and requires a relentless attention to detail. But it's also an area where a chef can show creative genius. Twenty-eight-year-old Steve has been cooking for ten years, but has little experience in pastry. I don't feel I'm really weak at desserts, but they're not at the level of my normal cooking, and to be honest, I want to be an all-round chef. At points in the competition, Steve has shown exceptional flair. Wow, that's really out there. I mean, <laughs> that is truly creative. <laughs> I think that's a highly accomplished plate of food. The subtlety in this is fantastic. It's a good dish. It is good. Very good. But his desserts have sometimes failed to show the same level of skill. Your creme caramel hasn't got the silky smooth texture that I'm looking for. And not quite there. The most worrying thing about this challenge for me probably is messing it all up, to be honest. There's so many things that can go wrong a couple of grams out and you've ruined a recipe, so there's no room for error, really. I think from now on until the end of the competition, we've got to go for perfection. I don't think anything less than perfection isn't going to be good enough for these judges. 27-year-old Daniel hasn't been cooking quite as long as the other two competitors, but has shown the potential to be a great chef. This is definitely what I would expect to see in a michelin starred establishment. It's subtle, it's clever, it's absolutely lovely. I'm the happiest man in the world at the minute. <laughs> but he's never trained in pastry and his desserts have let him down. It's still 15 minutes short of being cooked. The apple should be full of buttery caramel flavour and it's just not. Patisserie is not a strong point of mine. And honestly, it's not even a, an average point of mine. Um, and to find out I'm cooking for the likes of Michelle Roux, it's very nerve-wracking, very scary. To do well today is, is a total must. I don't want to slip up at all. I want to carry on and be at the summit at the end of the week <laughs> with a big flag in my hand. <laughs> so far in the competition, private chef Marianne has had the most success with desserts. I've never before had a rhubarb tart 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 and eating this one, I'm wondering why. Mm -hmm. It's a really, really good idea. That's, that's top notch, that's up there. But her lack of experience in professional kitchens has led to slip-ups in the heat of service. This is what? Medium. Ooh, that's well done. I'm just very wow. confused as to how many I've got on. Just, just, just don't say anything, please. She has lost the, the pot, really. And I think it's really important to remember that you're only as good as your last meal and, you know, things can go horribly wrong very quickly.
Today, each chef will have six hours to make a high tea consisting of a sandwich, a patisserie item, and a sketch signature cake. See if this will be your afternoon tea. Steve's menu consists of a black croque monsieur filled with mozzarella, basil and courgette, an olive oil cake and a choux bun filled with two types of cream and a mango and passion fruit jelly. The lemon choux pastry, the dough is very important and it's made like this, baked to perfection. He's tackling the shoe bun first because it has the most processes involved. I mean, this one for me looks quite simple, but there's jelly in there, there's pastry cream, there's whipped cream, and um, yeah, to get all of it right, it's going to be tough. Shoe pastry can be tricky to master. It needs to have just the right moisture content so that when it cooks, steam puffs up the pastry, making it light and airy but the final bun should be small and delicate. Uh, they look a bit flat. I'll see how they puff up in the oven, but I think I might have to make this again, to be honest. Steve must now wait for 25 minutes before he'll find out if his shoe pastry is up to Chef Roll's exacting standards. The piping has, been, uh, has gone wrong and they're a bit too large. Steve shoes on our afternoon tea stands, it would be not nice at all. So I think he should start all over again. Hopefully the second batch will be okay. So if they don't turn out okay and have to make another mix, then it could be uh, very much in the weeds. Daniel's high tea menu is a salmon sandwich, a rose macaroon, and a financier au chocolat which is a warm chocolate and almond cake. First, he's tackling the complex rose macaroons. Never tried them before, never made them before, and I know it is a delicacy in the patisserie world. To get the macaroon right today is going to be my main aim. First, he has to make an almond paste, and then an Italian meringue mix, which requires heating sugar water to precisely 121 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about six degrees away at the minute. The two are then added together. The final mix has to be accurately judged to ensure that the biscuit has the perfect texture. And he must also pipe the mix into identical circles. It must be a, a quite a, an artist technique to try and get exactly the same size. Um, hopefully, out of the million I've got on the tray, I might get three good ones. It's pretty good. Fingers crossed. Marianne's high tea menu is a toasted Mediterranean sandwich, a strawberry and panna cotta dessert with saffron jelly, and a French classic Merliton apricot cake. The hardest part for you will be the strawberries in a glass. She's starting on the strawberry dessert. Mm which consists of a layer of reduced strawberry marmalade, then a layer of vanilla panna cotta, topped with a delicate saffron jelly with peppered strawberries. Oh, wow, that's so delicious. But Chef Roll has spotted a problem. Did you make the strawberry reduction to put in your panna cotta mixture? No, I thought it was reduced already, Chef. You see, you have less colour than we have, and you, it will be less tasty than what we are serving. It looked really reduced. That's silly of me. OK, I'll do it again. Marianne hasn't reduced the bottom layer of her strawberry dessert, so she has to start all over again. Raoul said it will still be lovely, but just not quite as punchy as they'd normally serve it. So, obviously, one Michelin star, we're going for perfection. Daniel's macaroons are ready. He needs them to be flawless. They're fine, they're cooked, they're great. Excellent. Good job. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you. Come on. I am going for perfection today. Not quite got it on the size, but the macaroons themselves, they look, they look perfect. 
While Daniel's macaroons cool, he gets on with his rose-flavoured buttercream filling. I seem to be organised. Everything seems like it's going well, and I don't like it when things go well, because that means something's going to go wrong. I've got a slight problem. My creme of beurre. It's, it's, of beurre. Like, it's almost gone like scrambled eggs. I think you have to start all over no again. No problem. I don't want to put another one in the bin. I, I don't have time to put another one in the bin and start again after that. So this time it's going to have to be perfect. But a cream take too. In less than two hours, the great pastry chefs will arrive. For Steve, it's the moment of truth for his second attempt at the shoe buns. They're not what we, what we would serve. Get another batch on, so I want them to be perfect. The pressure is now on for Steve. If his third batch fails, he won't have time to make more. Let's try it again. Oh. Oh. You guys are on going home. Marianne is now working on the apricot Merliton cakes. The base is sable pastry. Sable is French for sand, and the pastry should have a crumbly, granular texture, which is an art to achieve. Pastry is really difficult to get right, and cooking for one of the world's most amazing pastry chefs is uh, quite a lot of pressure. to make everything look absolutely identically perfect. The filling consists of a layer of apricot marmalade and a rum, almond, cream and Grand Marnier mix. It's intimidating cooking in a Michelin star kitchen. There's no room for any imperfections whatsoever, so I'm just going to keep my eye on that. Because that looks like it needs more cooking, doesn't it? Slightly more, yep. Yeah. They're just a little bit runny in the middle, so I'm just giving them two, three more minutes. Um. <laughs> Only 45 minutes left. With Steve's third shoe pastry attempt in the oven, he has one chance to get his delicate olive oil cakes right. Things I'm worried about with the olive cake, uh, it may not rise too much or it could crack. Hopefully I'll get it right first time. Daniel is also facing his own difficulties in making the classic chocolate almond cake, the financière. I've just realised why it's going to have to be cooked perfectly, because in essence, it's almost a chocolate fondant recipe. If you cook it a minute sooner or a minute later, you, you can just get away with it, but any less or any more, and you've either got an undercooked bit of chocolate filling, or you've got a chocolate sponge cake, basically. It's half an hour before service, and three of the world's finest pastry chefs arrive. Michelle Roux has an honorary OBE for his services to cuisine, and has sold over a million books on patisserie and desserts. Once voted with his brother Albert as the most influential chef in the world, he has trained over 800 chefs. Nothing can be done quickly in pastry, no shortcut. It's something which is extremely serious. Any chef should start by doing an apprenticeship in pastry, or then he's not a chef in my book. Simple as that. Eric Lanlar worked under Michel Roux before starting his own patisserie business. His clientele includes Madonna, Sir Elton John, and Claudia Schiffer. What will impress me today, um, it will be uh, the lightness the freshness, um, creativity as well, and the presentation. Michael Nadell has been working in pastry for 44 years, and together with Michelle, 
is joint chairman of pastry chefs at the Academy of Culinary Arts. I'll be looking today for flavour and texture. There are some classical items on the menu. I'll be looking for the ingredients showing out in those particular things. Three parties here together, aren't we? Yeah. Lucky. I know, yeah. that's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Chefs are in, prepare everything for the afternoon tea. Steve is first up to serve the chefs, and all his hopes of impressing the judges rest on his third batch of shoe pastry buns. I still don't think they're quite as perfect as I'd like, but they're a lot better. I feel a lot more happy serving those than those ones. At last, Steve is satisfied with his shoe buns, but he's still got to fill them and make his black croque monsieur sandwiches. You have only 10 minutes left, are you going to be ready? Yes, sir. Just trying to take some care with it, really. I'm not taking it lightly. So really, I'm going to just ooze down the side. Please. Obviously nervous, but I've done all I can do now. It's out of my hands. Wow, look at that. Oh, yes. Steve has made black croque monsieur sandwiches, olive oil cakes, and shoe buns with lemon creme patissiere, chantilly cream, and mango and passion fruit jelly. Here we are. It's very well seasoned. Mm. Highly seasoned, I yeah. would say. Yeah, a little over salty. Yeah. Yeah. Nice flavors, yeah. yeah. I, call, I call that a good trial. Yes, mm. indeed. It's very good. Yeah. 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 Hey, a little olive oil cake. Yeah. The glazing is nice. Yeah. Yeah. No flavour comes through. Yeah. Well, the cake is light. It's moist. Yeah. But that's it. It stops there. Yeah. I find the shoe maybe a bit too big. Yes. Yeah. It's a shoe for two at least. A shoe for two. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, where's my crane? Oh. oh. <laughs> I think any proper ladies who come to um, yes. our afternoon tea will. I feel a bit um, overwhelmed yeah. by that. Eric, you're absolutely right. We've got a very good shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Texture is right. It's just too much. And it's too big. Yeah, it's too mm -hmm. big. The flavor come through. The croque monsieur, in our opinion, is certainly the best. Yeah. The size of your shoe is much too big. Yeah. Right. But we thought the shoe pastry was very, very tasty, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Very good indeed. All in all, I mean, uh, you happy with yourself? Uh, yeah, as a, considering my lack of experience in pastry, I, I'm quite pleased with what I've done. Well, I think you can be, because yeah. you've done well. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. I've been determined to win this competition from the off and this now just makes me more determined. It, I've shown a weakness but I've had good feedback on it and some stuff that I can take away and, and learn from. So I just look to eradicate those mistakes in the future and hopefully it'll take me all the way. Next up is Marianne, who has to toast her focaccia bread and assemble the parma ham, onions, salad and crushed tomatoes just before it's served. Think about the little details.
I do feel quite nervous because they, yeah, they will not miss anything. I don't want there to be any room for error. This is MasterChef, so you've got to be perfect in every way. Marianne has made Mediterranean sandwiches, strawberry panna cotta and saffron jelly desserts, and apricot merliton cakes. Nice though inside. I find that pleasant. Mm. Very pleasant. Very it is pleasant. Yeah. It's yeah. not dry, it's not uh, too wet. It's light. It's light. Nicely seasoned too. Yeah. Good. So we'll go for the mealito then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Very nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Lovely. And the pastry is very thin as well. It's right. lovely. It's all gone. Yeah. It's all gone. So that's the second full mark. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's very in a glass. There is some uh, finesse there in a. Um, it's a good job again. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good job. Very pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. The three little dessert were very good. Yes. And um, really, that really makes me worried about my job. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello, Martin. The three of us agree, and the... Uh, Presentation-wise, it was uh, very neat. The Milliton was really, I mean, the pastry was beautiful pastry and very thin. And it was just really perfect. Um, Have you done a lot of pastry or very little? Not a huge amount. Is it something you like? I, I do like it. You like pastry. Yeah. yeah it shows. Okay. It shows. I've got kind of goose pimples all down one side. Um, they were so fantastic. They were so complimentary. And just sitting in that room with, with those three amazing pastry chefs. It was just one of those memories I'm going to have for the rest of my life. It's amazing. Finally, it's Daniel's turn. His chocolate fondant cakes have to be served warm and mustn't be under or overdone. His Italian bread needs to be toasted and assembled with salmon, seaweed butter and aubergine caviar. I'm really nervous now, really apprehensive. It's out of my hands now, the food's gone, so I've just got to wait and see what they're going to say. Daniel's high tea consists of salmon sandwiches, rose macaroons and financier chocolate almond cakes. Everything is quite nice. Uh, you look appetizing. Yes. Aubergine caviar is supposed to be in it. I didn't test it. I mean, you were supposed to have some seaweed, deal butter well, in it, yeah. deal as well. So, definitely, well, the quantity of all those ingredients were lacking. Okay. Hey. Gâteau au chocolat. It's very moist inside. It's very nicely cooked yeah. and uh, very tasty. Yeah. Do you find the taste of the rose anywhere? Not really. Where well, yeah, you are? Not strong enough. So the garden was not really full of roses? Not really. No. Hi, Daniel. How are you doing? No 
nervous, very nervous. All in all, you've done well in a couple of those dishes. The macaron, the roses, we're not sure about. Uh, your sandwiches, you've got to work a bit on it. It was dry and, and really mean. The filling should have been a lot moister and better. But your little cake, almond chocolate cake, was delicious. Well done. And for your first experience, seven years in the kitchen, very little pastry background, you've done well. Thank you very much. Obviously, I'm disappointed. I wanted perfection all the way. The fact I haven't got it, 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 it's disappointing, but it's not too bad because obviously being my first attempt at a few of those dishes, it, it's, it's great to actually get good comments back on them as well. And today's made me really determined that I want to win Master because just achieving that standard is really satisfying. To come to place like this where they do such amazing like pastry goods I need to take that inspiration and show that I can up my game in pastry. I've had a few negative comments today but I've just got to brush that off now and go in and do really well and, and prove to the guys that I'm good enough to win this final.